Dental caries is a multifactorial localized process of disease of the teeth, which is characterized by the demineralization of the inorganic substance and destruction of the organic substance of the tooth. The factors that play a role in caries formation are the diet, microflora, time, and tooth surface. Saliva has a buffering effect and play a role in demineralization and remineralization process. It contains enzymes, mucus, antibacterial compounds, minerals, glycoproteins, lipids, and phosphoproteins. Lactobacilli is a gram-positive road-shaped anaerobic bacteria. They are the major part of the lactic acid bacteria group, which convert lactose and other sugar to lactic acid. They cause dental caries, but to a lesser extent. Streptococcus mutans is a gram-positive cocos-shaped anaerobic bacteria. It is the principal agent of dental caries. The growth and metabolism of streptococcus mutans changes the environmental conditions of the oral flora, which enables organisms to colonize and causes the formation of dental plaque. Streptococcus sanguis is a gram-positive cocos-shaped arabic bacteria. It is found in the dental plaque. It binds to oral surfaces and serves as a tether for the attachment of other oral microorganisms. How does plaque form? First of all, formation of an acellular layer starts in a couple of minutes after tooth brushing. This is called the acquired pellicle. This layer consists of salivary glycoproteins, phosphoproteins, and lipids, but no bacteria. Then, initial attachment occurs when free floating early colonizers of the teeth such as Tryptococcus sanguis, form an initial attachment to the pellicle by weak, antiversible van der Waals forces. If these bacteria are not removed, they eventually anchor themselves with adhesive structures, such as pili. When saccharose is present in the oral cavity, it will be converted to glucose and fructose by invertase enzyme. Then, streptococcus mutants will produce glycoside transferase enzyme, which will convert the glucose to glucans. Then the streptococcus mutants will be able to adhere to the pellicle to form plug. This attachment is irreversible. Carogenic bacteria needs carbohydrates to ferment it to acid. This carogenic bacteria can store carbohydrates intracellularly and extracellularly. The extracellular polysaccharides, which is called glucans, increase plaque bulk. Bulky plaque interfere with the outward diffusion of acid and inward diffusion of salivary buffers. Acid produced by bacteria will lower the pH and dissolve the molecules of the tooth transforming them to calcium and phosphorus ions. The calcium and phosphorus ions will diffuse out into the dental plaque and saliva. This process is called demineralization. Minerals present in the saliva will move to the demineralized structure to restore the mineral loss. This process can occur only if pH is above 5.5 and is called remineralization. This whole process of demineralization and remineralization often described as an ionic CSO depending on the pH of the environment. Dental plaque will act like a barrier and could prevent the CSO action. Enamel caries is usually the site of the initial lesion, unless dentin or cementum become exposed by gum recession. Enamel caries is a dynamic physicomical process involving the solution and precipitation of minerals. The initial lesion is conical in shape, with its apex towards the dentin for smooth surface caries. And for occlusal caries, it's conical in shape and its apex is towards the, the enamel. A series of four zones of differing translucency can be distinguished. The first zone is translucent zone. 
it is the earliest and deepest area of demineralization, approximately 1% mineral loss, resulting from the formation of submicroscopic spaces or pores located at prism boundaries and other junctional sites such as Treopredzius. The subsurface translucent zone enlarges, and a dark zone develops in its center. The dark zone is superficial to translucent zone, approximately 2-4% mineral loss. As the lesion enlarges, more minerals are lost, and the center of the dark zone becomes the body of the lesion. Body of the lesion extends from the just beneath the surface zone to the dark zone, approximately 5-25% mineral loss. There is increased prominence of the Streifredzius in the body of the lesion, the explanation for which is unknown. The lesion is now clinically recognizable as a white spot. The body of the lesion may become stained by exogenous pigments from food, tobacco, and bacteria. The lesion is now clinically recognizable as a brown spot. The surface zone represents one of the most important changes in enamel caries in terms of prevention and management of the disease. It has 1% mineral loss with zone of remineralization resulting from the diffusion barrier and mineral content of flux. Dentin caries differs from enamel caries in that it is a living tissue and as such can respond to caries attack. The defense reaction of pulpodentinal complex may begin before the caries process reaches the dentin because of rotation of odontoblasts transmitted through the weakened enamel. Different zones are found in dentin caries. The first zone is the sclerotic zone, which is a defense reaction occurs within the tubules when acid initially starts to penetrate them. The odontoblast processes start to lay down calcification within the tubules, and they become plugged with the mineral deposits. This helps to slow down the acid advance, giving the pulp some protection from acid. The second zone is zone of demineralization in which acid produced by bacteria travels down the dentinal tubules, causing demineralization. The zone of demineralization is the advancing front of the caries lesion and may be very small, less than 1 mm. Dentin is relatively easily dissolved by acid. At 6.7 pH, the intertubular matrix is mainly affected by acid diffusion ahead of the bacterial front. It is important to note that there are no bacteria in this region. The third zone is zone of bacterial invasion. Here, the tubules are invaded by bacteria, which then multiply within the tubule lumen, as well as decalcifying the dentin with acid. The bacteria dissolve the proteins within the tubules. This is called proteolysis. The walls of the tubules are softened by the proteolytic activity and some may be extended by increasing mass of multiplying bacteria. The pretubular dentin is first compressed, followed by interptubular dentin, resulting in liquefactive foci. Liquefactive foci run parallel to the direction of the tubules and may be multiple. These changes are enhanced in the zone of destruction. The fifth zone is zone of destruction. When enamel has been cavitated, bacteria infect the dentin. There may be a zone of destruction within the dentin, where the dentin becomes necrotic and liquefies. Cracks appear in the dentin, usually at right angles to the direction of the dentinal tubules. Cracks are called transverse clefts.